Have you heard about the world's first GMO heirloom tomato? Well, it's here and there's a lot we can learn about this. In this video, we're going to discuss a major corporate screw up. We'll talk about the development of a truly GMO tomato that gardeners can actually grow. And I'll have a look at what all this means to gardening, both short term and long term. The story starts with Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. In their 2024 catalog, they pictured a new tomato on their front cover. Now this one was really special and it was a very dark plum color. This is what they had to say about this tomato. Shocking, the first truly purple non-GMO tomato presenting the purple galaxy. After years of natural selection work, we are so excited to be getting ready for a big launch in 2024. Incredible rich tomato flavor thanks to its super intense color. A real galactic beauty that will be a real game changer in the tomato patch. It didn't take long for people to notice that this tomato looked a lot like a new GMO tomato that was also dark purple. And so people asked questions. This new GMO tomato was produced by Norfolk Plant Science, and they even contacted Baker Creek and asked them about their source. Well, Baker Creek was adamant. They told everyone, we did lots of testing on this tomato, and it's not a GMO. But the questions kept coming. Soon, their online catalog had this to say. We had hoped to have a very limited quantity of Purple Galaxy tomato for 2024. However, we are experiencing production issues with this variety, and it is now unlikely that we will be able to offer it to our customers. So they blame production issues. But after a little while and lots of online complaining, they backtracked even on that. And they said, hey, just a minute, we did a lot more testing, and in fact, it is a GMO, so we refused to sell it. There have been darker tomatoes being bred, and they're heirlooms, so they've been bred for a long time. These are tomatoes like Black Crim and Purple Cherokee. Now, the outside skin is a little dark and a little purplish, but when we cut these tomatoes open, the insides are quite red. Now, compare that to the new GMO Purple Tomato. It's very dark on the outside, and when you cut it open, all of the inside is also purple. Now, genetic breeding can advance plants slowly, but you don't see big jumps from a red inside to a purple inside overnight. It's pretty clear to anyone who understands tomato breeding that this didn't happen through normal breeding techniques. I mean, we tried doing it for 50 years or more. It didn't work, and then suddenly Baker Creek has it. The other issue you have to understand is that this genetic testing is not that difficult. If you move a DNA strand from one organism into another one, you can test for it. So I don't know why they had so much trouble with their testing techniques, and I suspect they never really did a lot of testing. This was a major screw-up by a larger corporation. They specialize in heirloom seed, and they made the mistake of putting a new GMO tomato on their front cover. But the story gets more interesting still. To understand this story fully, we have to talk about a little chemistry here, a little food science for you. There is a dark purple dye that's naturally found in food that's called anthrocyanin. This is an antioxidant. What it does is it absorbs free radicals in our bodies. Now, what all that means is that it's helping our bodies defend against cancer. It reduces the amount of cancer we get. Now, I'm not sure how definitive that science is yet, but it's certainly pointing in that direction. And because of that, we've come up with this term called superfood. Blueberries and blackberries are superfoods because they contain a lot of anthrocyanin, and that's healthy for us. So about 20 years ago, a company called Norfolk Plant Science decided, let's see if we can get the tomato to make this compound. Well, it turns out tomatoes do make the compound naturally, but most of it is in the leaves and the stem. There's very little in the fruit. So what these scientists wanted to do was increase the amount of naturally produced anthrocyanin in tomatoes inside the fruit. They knew that natural breeding would never accomplish this, but there was a chance to do this using genetic engineering. So what they did was they took some DNA out of an edible, blue snapdragon 
and they put that into the tomato plant. Now, they didn't actually add the genes to make the compound. What they did was they added genes to increase the production of the compound. Basically, they went to the tomato and said, look, ramp up production of this anthrocyanin compound. And what they ended up with was a very purple tomato both on the skin and on the inside. And that color comes from the antioxidant in there. This work took 20 years to develop. They did lots of testing to show, in fact, that the antioxidant levels in these tomatoes was much higher than regular tomatoes. That proves that the DNA was actually working. Another property of this compound is that it makes the skin a little tougher. As a result of this, the tomato has a much longer shelf life, almost two times the normal shelf life of a tomato. It also reduces the amount of mold the tomato gets. Now, that's great for shipping produce all over the world. But of course, there was still one big question. Is this tomato healthy? Will the GMO part harm us? So they had to do that testing too. And so what they did was they took some mice and they split them in half. One half had normal mice food along with red tomatoes. The other set had normal food with purple tomatoes. And what happened? The mice who had the purple diet lived longer than the ones that ate the red tomatoes. It showed two things. The purple tomato, A, did not harm the mice, and B, it was actually healthier for the mice. After all this work, they did get FDA approval to sell the seeds in the U.S. And they're now available through Norfolk Health Products. Is there such a thing as a GMO heirloom? Well, not today, but there will be in the future. Let's have a closer look at the purple tomato. Now, these purple tomatoes are really exciting. But what I'm really looking forward to is a new type of ketchup. I think that'd be great. The question comes up is, is the purple tomato a heirloom? And this is what Norfolk says on their website. The 2024 purple tomato variety is inbred like a heirloom tomato. What they've done with this tomato is that they created it, and then they grew it for a number of years, and then collected seed each year from the tomatoes they were growing. They've shown that the DNA is very stable. Each generation of tomato looks very much like the original one. This DNA is stable. What that means for gardeners is that when you buy the seed and plant it in your garden, you can collect seeds and grow them again next year. And so you'll be able to grow purple tomatoes every year. Now, with some of the commercial GMO seed, it's illegal to do that. But Norfolk has made the seed available to everyone, including gardeners. And in fact, this is the first GMO seed that gardeners can get. You've probably seen the no GMO stamp on all your seed packs and all the seed catalogs. Well, that was just marketing hype. Gardeners up to this point have not been able to buy a GMO. This purple tomato is the first GMO seed that you as a gardener can buy. And you can reuse the seed year over year. You don't have to buy it every year. This leads to another very interesting question that we have to ask. What happens when your purple tomato, which is sitting right beside your heirlooms, cross-pollinate? Now, tomatoes usually self-pollinate, so there's not a lot of crossing taking place, but there is some. A bee can certainly go to one tomato and move the pollen to the other and cross-pollinate. Or you might decide to do this on your own. The seed from these heirloom tomatoes now have the DNA from the GMO. Are these still heirlooms? Is there a possibility that this DNA is going to pollute all of our tomatoes? That's not really a big issue because the genes that make this tomato special are very dark purple and you're going to see it in all the offspring. So you'll know right away if you've transferred that DNA. What it does mean though is that as a gardener, you're going to be able to crossbreed these and make more nutritious tomatoes. And that's a really good thing going forward. This is really exciting for gardeners. And I think over the next few years, we're going to see a lot of different varieties of dark tomatoes. Imagine a beefsteak that's this dark. Here's another interesting question that Norfolk has answered on their website. Will my purple tomato fruit make seeds? If I save the seeds, will they be viable? And will the plants be the same purple tomato plants? And the answer is yes. 
This variety will produce fruit from seeds. The seeds will be viable and will produce purple tomatoes. Growers can save the seeds and enjoy the plants and fruits in your garden. The same terms and conditions apply for future generations. I think there might be some legal restrictions about you selling the seeds, but there's certainly no problem with you using your own seeds and sharing it with friends. I know that a lot of people out there are afraid of GMOs, but for the most part, that fear is not based on science. If you eat sweet potatoes, you're already eating a GMO. Those are natural GMOs. A few years ago, the papaya industry was ready to collapse because of diseases. And we developed a GMO papaya to solve that problem. So most of the papaya sold in North America is a GMO product. We've been eating GMO products for 40 years. And we haven't found a single health issue with them. So... I know quite a few of you are sitting there going, well, I don't want to eat GMOs. I don't trust GMOs. If you still feel that way, I really encourage you to watch one of my future videos, which will be placed right here as soon as it's available. It busts all the myths about GMOs. And if you already know the answer to all those questions and you're just interested in growing your new purple tomato seed, have a look at this video right here. Can't wait for that purple ketchup.